What's up guys, welcome back. This is part 7 of the Night Lord series. That's right, I said 7. If George Lucas can start from 4, I can start from 7. In this video we're going to look at how to paint the base. This base was largely built by a client that I'm working for but I added some extra stuff to it to make it a bit more interesting. I used a pin vise to drill some bullet holes into the surface of the wall and I also used a hobby knife to cut some scratches into the surface. Then I just glued a bunch of extra sand and a few bits of broken plaster just to make that bottom section a bit more uneven so that it's not so flat looking. I primed it by basing with Games Workshop Chaos Black and then I sprayed it from above with some Tamiya super fine white. I tried not to totally cover it with white so that I was left with a bit of a speckled surface to work on. To start off we're going to mix a desaturated blue grey by mixing some scale colour Cantabric blue into some Games Workshop Cadian flesh tone and we'll mix that down with some water to a glaze consistency. Now the idea is to simply draw that glaze over the surface of the larger parts of the wall and the paint is going to be thin enough to allow the speckling from the primer to to show through underneath which is going to give us a nice textured effect. As you move forward in the painting process you want to try and retain that speckling so make sure that none of your layers go on too thick or you're going to end up covering all that detail ruining the effect that we're going for. Once I'd laid in that initial pass of colour I decided it wasn't quite blue enough so I simply added a bit more blue into the mix. And again keeping the paint really thin I went back and applied another layer. Just drawing the glaze over the surfaces, leaving that primer showing through underneath. We're going to be using glazes for basically the whole thing, which is a totally different way to how I painted the Night Lord miniature. This was deliberate as I wanted there to be a lot of contrast between the base and the model so that the model stands out and doesn't get overwhelmed. I'm also using pretty much all desaturated colours for this, again so that it contrasts with the more saturated colours used on the model. The base is actually going to look pretty ropey to begin with, but once we start adding in more detail and colour variations, you're going to be surprised at just how well it all comes together. Now that we've got a bit of colour on there, we can start to play about with it. So first we're going to add some shadows. For that we can mix some black into the Cantabri blue, giving us a really dark desaturated blue to work with. And again we're going to mix in some water in there to thin it down to a glaze consistency. And I'll apply this near the bottom of the base. Then while the glaze is still wet, I'm going to grab a second slightly damp brush and with a back and forth motion, I'll draw the glaze up away from the bottom pulling the glaze as far away as possible so that it doesn't dry with a hard edge. Also notice I'm using pretty big brushes for this, that's just to make it easier on myself. If you use a smaller brush you need to do a lot more work when you're feathering out the edge of the glaze, so it's better to use a bigger brush if you have one. I'll mirror that shadow at the top as well, using the same technique of placing the glaze, then feathering it out with a second brush, drawing the glaze away from the shadow. If we make the top and bottom of the base a little darker than the rest, we'll create more focus on the middle, which is where the main figure is going to be, so that will help to draw the eye to that point. And we'll do the same sort of thing on the other side. It's quite fun to paint in this sort of style, you can build up a pretty good result really quite quickly, and it ends up looking way more impressive than the amount of effort justifies. Just remember to keep the paint really thin, so that you don't lose too much of the texture from the primer. We'll add a bit of colour variation now by making another glaze, this time with some scale colour black leather, a very dull desaturated purple. These colours are all ones that I've already used on the main figure itself. I find that it's important to reuse colours from the model on the base, that way you're not going to get weird colour clashes when you put the two together. Alright so we're going to do the same thing again, applying the glaze on the bottom of the wall section and then quickly feathering it out with a second damp brush, drawing the glaze up and away from the shadow creating a smooth transition. Don't worry too much if you get any of the glaze onto the surrounding elements, once we paint over them it's not going to matter all that much, it will just give you a bit of colour variation to it so it might actually help you to be a bit messy here and there. Speaking of those other elements, we'll start to paint them in now. For that we'll use some secret weapon brown rust, which will thin down to a glaze with some water. I applied this in the same way as the panels, drawing the glaze over the surface, letting the speckled details show through underneath. We're just going to apply this over a few layers to get quite a nice base to work over. 
I wanted these parts to be quite heavily rusted, so this brown colour is going to give us a really good starting point to build up quite a convincing rust effect. If you haven't tried any of these secret weapon paints, you should give them a go, they're really nice to work with. I really like the rust colours especially. When I'm applying this, I'm also trying to think about where there would be more rust and then pushing the glaze into those areas to make them darker. So you can see here I'm pushing the brush into the little rivets because those spots are going to be super rusty. Don't forget to do the edges and try not to get any onto your blue panels at this stage. We will be dirtying up those panels later but you want to be pretty controlled about how you do that so try your best to be neat at this stage. So yeah, you can see that I go back over the surface a few times just building up that brown colour. We'll use some more of that rust brown again and just apply it around the rivets on those metal parts. I just feel that they are not quite dark enough yet. That's actually one of the good things about painting with glazes. You can always go back and add some more if you want and you're still going to retain that detail in there. When you're painting with solid colours you have to create all that detail yourself which can be pretty difficult. What I'm doing here is just building up the colour around the rivets. Try to remember that this is just the base colour of our rust. We'll be adding other colours on top of this and then adding streaks onto the wall panels so don't worry if you think it looks a bit crappy at this stage. Your first colour usually does. The idea is to add more detail as you add more colours. You can also do some random little blobs of colour on the flat areas, especially on these bits that don't have any details on them, just to make them a bit less uniform looking. Try not to overthink that though, just let your brush dance around on the surface and let the glaze go wherever it wants to. That'll actually get you a better effect than if you were super meticulous about it. Take some of that dark blue glaze that you made earlier and we'll paint that into the little recesses on the wall panels. So I'm just painting it into the little details there to make them stand out a bit. And the same thing on the other side. If you get any of the glaze spilling onto the surface of the panel, just get rid of it by drawing it off with a second brush. I'll also paint the recesses along the side here to give them a bit of a shadow so that those details stand out. Alright, we'll add some colour variation now by using some Secret Weapon Old Rust. This is a really nice desaturated purple and we'll again thin it down to a glaze with some water. I try to apply it a bit randomly in the flat expansive areas and then I'm being a bit more focused when I get to the rivets. And again you can do this over a few layers until you're happy with how it looks. I tend to just fart about with it, just adding some of the colour here and there while I'm moving around the model. Here on the side we'll use the purple to double as a shadow, so I'll just place it near the top here. And then using a second brush I'll draw the edge down away from the glaze and the same with the other bits. On the top again we'll be more random just to flesh out the details there, putting little blobs of colour haphazardly over the surface. Alright I think that's starting to look pretty cool now so we'll move on to our next colour. And for that we're going to be using some secret weapon orange rust. And as you probably guessed, we're going to thin this down with some water to a glaze consistency. So this colour is going to really sell the rust effect. The idea here is to place the orange over and around the rivets, then paint a little bit of it down onto the wall panel. While that's still wet, you're going to quickly grab a second brush and use that brush to pull the glaze straight down. It's going to look a bit too saturated at this initial stage, but we'll work some magic layer to knock it back a bit and make it way more natural. Try to keep the streaks pretty straight while you're doing this. I use the edge of the wall as a reference guide while I'm pulling the glaze down, with the idea being that I make the line parallel to the edge of the wall. You can go back with some more of your orange and repeat the process if you're not happy with the length of the streaks. Alright, so I'll do the same sort of thing on the rest of the rivets, just placing the glaze on and around the little raised details, then drawing it straight down. This is probably the most fun part of the process, there's something really satisfying about seeing it all start to take shape. I'll add the streaks onto the lower part too. Maybe I could make those main ones more impactful by doing another layer of the glaze. To incorporate a bit of colour variation into the streaks we can use some of that purple old rust from before and just place it up near the rivet 
and then draw it down with another brush. So that just adds a little bit more interest to the colour. You don't have to do that, but it does make sense that the colour would be a bit darker closer to the rivet. And I quite like the way it looks. Alright, so to knock this colour back a bit, what we're going to do is take some of that old rust colour and apply it directly over the streaks like this. It's going to look pretty extreme when you do this, but don't worry. What we'll do is quickly grab our second brush and feather it out, pulling it down over the wall panel and we'll do the same thing over the other two. So that helps to give a little bit of colour variation to the panels, but it also tones down the streaks somewhat, making them look a bit less painted on. We'll do some more work on that later, but for now we're going to pick out all the little bullet holes and the battle damage details. For that we're going to go back to our trusty brown rust colour and just paint it over all the holes and dents and the little cuts on the surface. My thinking here is that the inside of the walls would be metal, so now that they're exposed they would start to get all corroded and rusted, just like the metal trim. Alright so once we've painted them in with the brown, we'll switch back to the purple with the old rust and just apply some variation to the colour. I tried to target the top of the bullet holes with this so that the purple gives you sort of a shadow tone. And then we can grab some of the orange rust again and start to apply a bunch of streaks and rust spots coming from the bullet holes and the scratches and stuff. So I'm just showing this on one side now but obviously you do this sort of stuff on the other side as well. It's the same process, just starting off with the brown then adding some of the purple before finishing off with the orange. Alright, so I think we're doing quite well with the colours we have, so what we'll do is move on to adding a few Edge Highlights. For that we're going to mix in some white sands into our blue mix from earlier to get quite a bright blue colour. And I'm going to leave this as a pretty thick consistency so that it covers well. And we'll use that to pick out the edges of the raised details on the wall. So what I'm doing here is using the side of the brush quite near the tip and just letting it graze along the lower edge of those little details. And you can see that I'm avoiding hitting the little rust smears as well. It probably makes more sense to do these highlights before you apply the rust stains, but this is just the way that I did it at the time. We'll be doing these a bit brighter later on. I actually paint over these in a moment, but I thought I'd leave this part in so that you can see if you need to change something. It's really no big deal because you can always go back and repaint it later. We'll also highlight the heavily rusty parts. So to do that, we're going to simply mix some of the orange rust into some white sands to get a really light orange. When you're mixing light colours like this, it's always better to add the darker colour into the lighter one. If you try and do it the other way around, you can end up wasting quite a lot of paint trying to get it light enough. Alright, so we'll use that to highlight the top of each little rivet, just hitting the upper edge of each one. Again, I'm using the side of the brush close to the very tip for this. I find that that makes it a lot easier for you to put the paint where you want it. Once that's done, I'll also add some edge highlights along the side of the struts. And I'm using broken lines for that to get a more interesting finish. Essentially, you're just doing an edge highlight as you would normally, but every so often, you're going to lift the brush up so that you leave a little gap. And you're going to do that fairly quickly so that you're not putting a lot of thought into where, the, where you're putting the gaps. That way, you can get a pretty random, natural looking effect. So at this point I realised the rust streaks still looked a bit too saturated and had that sort of painted on look. So to fix that what I did is I grabbed some of the brown rust glaze and I just applied that over the whole surface of each wall section. That's going to help to dull it all down quite a bit. So now that we've done that we've obviously dulled down all of our edge highlights at the same time. So we'll reapply them but we'll also make them a touch brighter this time to increase the contrast. So I'll just mix a bit more white sands into the highlight and we'll use that to pick out the edges of our little details. Again I'm using that broken highlight technique to make these a bit more interesting. Alright so we're going to keep dotting up the wall panels now. Uh, they're still a bit too fresh looking. So I'll take some of that orange rust glaze and apply it quite liberally along the top of the panel and then using a second brush we'll just draw it down over the wall section. This helps to make the surface look more dirty in general but it also helps to make the streaks more convincing because it places them underneath a layer of paint so that they don't look like they've just been painted on and you get more of a sense that they've been there for quite some time and layers of grime have been forming over the top. 
I try to do this over any of the major rusty parts to help sell the effect. And I might as well show that on the other side as well, just so that you get the idea. So if you've never tried this two brush approach, don't be scared to give it a go. You do need to be quite fast when you're switching between brushes, but, but if you have the second brush close by, it's not going to be that big a problem. When I'm doing it, sometimes I have the brush held in my mouth so that I can quickly grab it. And I usually don't bother to drop the other one. I just hold both in my same hand so that I don't lose time. And then when I finish feathering the glaze out, I'll just wash the brush and put it back in my mouth so that I'm ready to grab it again after I apply the glaze. Or you can also have the second brush on the desk in front of you and just pick it up when you need it. Whatever way you feel is more comfortable. In order to maximise contrast, I'll push the highlights a bit more on the rusty parts, just with white sands on its own. Again, I'm not covering the whole edge of the paint, I'm just picking out little bits here and there along the surface. I feel that when you make it a solid line, it just looks a little plastic and kind of boring, so it's good to add these little dots and lines and stuff to help avoid that. I'll also do the same on the wall panels, adding some of those extreme highlights with the white sands. And we'll put some on the bottom of the little bullet holes as well. Again, try not to hit the rusted stains. So yeah, I think it's starting to look pretty sick now. I really like the way all the colours are working together. Originally, I'd thought to add an OSL effect on the light and have it casting an orange glow over the middle of the wall and also onto the figure, but... The more I painted the wall, the more it seemed like the lights would actually not be functioning. I mean, would somebody really let the wall fall into this level of disrepair and still come out on the regular to change the light bulbs? I can't really see that happening. However, that could just be me trying to reason myself out of having to paint the OSL effect, but I think the logic makes sense. Anyway, we'll finish off the broken light layer, but for now we're going to move on to the lower part of the base. For that we're going to start off by using some Vallejo Dark Brown Wash. So this is a really good wash, it's great for dart effects. There's nothing difficult here, I'm just going to wash it over the sandy parts of the base and I'm going to try not to get it onto the larger bits of rubble or the little dead guy. But if I do touch them a little bit with the brush, it's not going to be the end of the world. They're all going to end up looking pretty beat up and dirty, so it doesn't matter all that much. Just don't cake them in the wash or you're going to have trouble getting a nice colour later on. Once that's dry, I'm going to mix a little bit of black into some scale colour chestnut ink and just a little bit of water to thin it down slightly. And we're going to apply this to the dirt, putting it into the recessed parts to darken them down. And you can also use a second brush to draw the edges out a little, just the same sort of way that you did on the wall panels earlier. So as well as giving you a bit of a colour variation, this also dries a bit shinier than the dark brown wash, so you get quite a nice difference in the finish between the two. Once that's dried, we can add another colour, this time using scale colour Cantabria Blue mixed with a bit of black. Again, thinned down with some water to a glaze consistency. And we'll apply that nearer the outer rim of the base just to help darken that area down. Don't forget that you can use a second brush to help pull the glaze out onto the surface. And we're going to add yeah, another colour, this time with some Secret Weapon Old Rust, which I'll dab onto the dirt just pretty randomly here and there on the surface. I'll use that second brush to tease out the edges of the glaze, drawing it out a little over the sand texture, just so that it doesn't dry as a single blob of colour. I think that when you're painting dirt it's a good idea to add in a few different colours, just because if you look at actual dirt it's never just one tone, there's always a lot of variation in there. So I'm trying to emulate that by adding in a bunch of different colours, a lot of which that I've already used elsewhere on the model. It's always good to reuse colours from other parts of the miniature that you're working on so that everything looks like it belongs and it's not just being plopped on as an afterthought. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm not going to bother doing any dry brushing on it or anything, I don't think it really needs it. Okay, so for the rocks we'll use the dark blue from earlier, uh, which I made with the Cantabric blue and black, and we'll simply glaze that over the surface of those fallen bits of masonry. There's not really that much to say about this part, just try not to let the glaze pull on the surface so that it doesn't dry with any staining. Once it dries, go back in with the same colour and apply another layer of the glaze. 
All right, so now that we've got that initial color down, we want the stones to look like they belong there. So we'll take that original wash color from our dirt, which was the Vallejo dark brown wash, and we'll paint that onto the sides just to dirty them up a bit. Using the same colour from the dart is going to help to make them look like they've been in that same setting. We'll move on to doing the corpse now and we'll do this really simply by mixing some black into some scale colour deep red to get us this really dark red tone. Which as per usual we'll thin down to a glaze consistency with some water. And all you're going to do is glaze the dark red over the whole surface of the body. And once that dries I'll add another layer of the same colour. Next up we're going to use some ripped sponge, so this is actually a bit of packing foam that I've ripped to get a ragged surface and we'll dip that into some of the dark red and then tap it against a paper towel to get most of it off the sponge. Then we're simply going to press the sponge onto the surrounding areas near the corpse, so the stones, the ground, even over here on the wall. So in this part it can just simulate general dirt and wear and tear on the building. But on the rocks it's going to look more like dried blood. To finish that off we're going to make a roughly 1 to 1 mix of Tamiya Clear Red and Tamiya Smoke. Again getting us a really dark red colour. When I'm working with these paints I usually use a bit of scrap plastic to mix the stuff on rather than using a palette. It's really quite nasty stuff so make sure that you use an old brush as well, preferably a synthetic one. And whatever you do, don't lick your brush. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a mistake you only make once. And we're going to paint this gloopy gunk over the exposed inner parts of the body. I'll paint it over the skull too, and that kind of saves us from having to paint the thing properly. As a finishing touch, I'm going to use the sponge again and just sponge on some of the gloopy red stuff just around where the body is and on some of the fallen masonry. Actually, we could probably put more of that stuff underneath the body because I guess it would be a pretty gory in there. So, Alright, so that's us almost finished with the base. We'll go back and do the broken light now. And we'll do this just like we did the other rusty parts. First painting on a glaze of the brown rust colour. Just paint it over the whole surface, including the light. The rust from the metal would run onto the light, so that would be pretty messed up looking anyway. Once that's dry, we can use some of our old rust glaze. Then we'll use the orange rust and just randomly splodge it onto the metal parts. And using that two brush technique from earlier, we'll rust up the surrounding areas of the light by adding a glaze of orange rust, then feathering it out with a second brush. Finally adding some bright highlights with that white sands and orange rust mix. Don't go crazy with the highlights so just a little bit here and there is fine. Alright, so the last thing I did just to finish off the wall was to use some Army Painter Strong Tone and add it to the bottom of the wall sections in order to darken them down a bit. Then I feathered that out with a second brush, drawing the edge of the wash away towards the top of the panels and I did the same thing on the other side. Alright, and then my favourite part is uh, painting the rim black. There's something really satisfying about painting the rim right at the end. If you're left with a bit of white showing near the edge of the top, you can just take one of your darker mud colours and paint that out. Alright guys, so that is how I went about painting this base. You can see that you can get pretty far just by building up thin glazes. It's quite a fun way to paint and it's honestly, it's pretty difficult to mess it up. Just be careful that you don't make your paint too thick or you're going to cover up a lot of that speckling from your initial primer and that's really the main thing that you want to avoid. This is probably my favourite way to paint. I find it's way more fun than using layering or the blocking in techniques that I usually use. Plus it gives you a much less intense finish so it's great for painting bases with because you can make them fade into the background more so that they don't overpower the figure. Anyway, I hope you give it a go on your own stuff. Just try and use some of the colours that you've already used on the main figure and be open to experimenting with other tones and you might surprise yourself with what you come up with. Take care guys, more videos are coming soon. Thank you for all your support. Bye from now.